Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Kind of Change. Today, you can see here, we're going to be watching a video on a mother um, who had a transgender child and the school didn't tell her. This actually happened back in 2021, I believe. And um, so we're seeing this now. So let's get into this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. I just want to show you guys some of the dangers of keeping stuff away from the parents. I adopted Sage after my son died when she was still a baby. She's been through six foster homes by then, but we loved her, and she blossomed into a joyful, lively girl who made music and art. Pu puberty began and COVID hit, and she was treated for depression and anxiety, at times very severe. Her teachers shared any concerns with me so her treatment could be adapted. The transparency ended in August of 2021 when Sage started high school. She started a public high school and she told me that all the girls there were bi, trans, lesbian, emo. So first thing I wanna say is that you notice that she said that they were being transparent when it came to her mental health and everything. But when it came to her, um, you're gonna see, when it came to her uh, having a different experience in certain things, the school decided to keep it from her. And she wanted to wear boys clothes and be emo. Because I saw it as just a phase, it was fine with me. But at school, she told them something different. She was now a boy named Brooke Draco with male pronouns. Sage asked the school not to tell me, and they did not tell me, even though I informed them of her mental health history and medication. If I had known, this would be a much different story. She was terribly bullied. No one told me, but boys followed her, touched her, threatened violence and rape. Something happened in the boys' bathroom, but for two days, the school told me nothing. They kept meeting with Sage alone, and she became so distraught, they called me to pick her up. That is one thing I wanted to talk about, okay? I had mentioned this in a video not too long ago, and this is what I brought up, and, um, and now I, it makes a lot more sense hearing it. I want to show you guys what I said. And if the kid is being bullied, let's say they're being bullied because they are struggling with their identity, right? Are you going to tell the parents? You're going to have to tell the parents, right? You can't just say they're being bullied for no reason. You have to say they're being bullied because Jimmy thinks that, or Jimmy believes that he's a girl. You're going to have to say something. So this whole thing about playing keep away doesn't help anybody. Because if, you're, if what you say is true, right, change kids always get bullied. If you don't tell the parents why the kid is getting bullied, how can they help? Huh? Huh? If the kid is getting bullied, what are you going to tell the parent? That is my point. You have, you can't play keep away because then if a kid gets beat up or gets seriously harmed because what you guys say is because they were trans, but the parent never knew, who are you going to blame? The parents. And the parents will be like, I didn't even know, I didn't even know Jimmy was getting bullied for that. They just told me he was getting bullied. I had no idea why. Because they're playing keep away like goofballs. Thank you. That's exactly what I said. I said, if this happened, this before I knew about this story, but my thing was, if a kid is getting bullied for being transgender and you don't tell the parents because you think the parents are going to say something, how do you expect it to help? And now we get to see the aftermath of what happens when uh, we don't tell the parents. Let's continue with the video. That evening, I found a hall pass labeled Draco, and Sage told me she was identifying as a boy and that her counselor said she could use the boys' bathroom. She'd been jacked up against the wall by a group of boys. She was crying, terrified. I said, just stay home, we'll figure it out. That was my last conversation with Sage for five months. The night she ran, she thought to a young friend she'd met online. She left a note saying she was scared of what would happen if she stayed. The sheriff, FBI, search dogs were called in. I dropped to my knees in prayer. Nine days later, the FBI found her in Baltimore. My baby had been lured online, sex trafficked by DC, then Maryland. She was locked in a room, drugged, gang raped and brutalized by countless men. It was night. The FBI told us to pick her up in Maryland the next morning. We packed our cars with blankets and stuffed animals and, and arrived by 8 a.m. But we were told we couldn't see her and were summoned before Judge Robert Kershaw late that afternoon. They didn't even tell Sage that we came for her. We finally entered the courtroom and Sage appears on a huge Zoom screen from a prison cell. She looks tiny and broken and I cry out, I love you Sage. 
Sage responds, I love you too, Nana. But attorney Anissa Khan rebukes us. She is a he, and his name is Draco, not Sage. You see what I'm saying? That's what's so frustrating when it comes to this. It's so frustrating that they think that it's so dang important for a child to be called this. When a lot of this could have been avoided had they just told the mom in the first place. As you heard, because she was getting bullied, right? And her mother had no idea she was getting bullied and what was going on until her. she finally came out and told her. By that time, the girl had already been involved with talking to these people online. That's what the, That was the last time she saw her for that night. She got lured out to go do some other things. Her, her kid was going through so much stuff that her mom had no idea because the school thought it was so important to have the pronouns right. They thought it was so important for the kid to be able to call themselves that. They were so caught up in the brainwashing agenda thinking that parents who have transgender kids must hate them, right? That a, a parent can't even try to deal with their kid. That's what's so dangerous when it comes to this stuff, even to the point where the attorney says, oh, you know what? You must call this individual Draco and not Sage. I know she's your daughter, and I know you uh, raised her, and all the money that anything, uh, anything that's going on in her life, you uh, helped put a roof over her head and did all these things, and obviously you love her, but we think we know what's better, even though this is a child. We were floored. What? Khan accuses, of, accuses us of emotional and physical abuse, that we are misgendering her. Even though we just learned she claims to be trans and we're willing to use any name and pronouns to bring her home, my husband was so tearful he kept forgetting the new pronouns. So the to see... Why don't we have love for anybody like this? That's what I'll be telling you guys when it comes to this whole confusion thing. Like I say, the tide is turning, but I think it's not because people hate uh, people who uh, struggle with the identity or gender dysphoria, the people who really struggle with it. I think what people hate is that they don't, nobody gives them any slack. These two parents just found out that their kid was trans, disappeared for nine days. They just found out because the school refused to tell them. They didn't know until the night that the girl went missing. So they're scared. Their daughter had just been going through the ringer after being trafficked. Probably got made videos and all that kind of stuff that you see on the disgusting industry adult entertainment videos. she has gone through all this and he calls his daughter Sage because once again, at this point, they had never heard their daughter say their name was Draco. Except for one time the night before she went missing. So. These lawyers and everything saying you're being physically and emotionally, emotionally abusive to the child they've been calling Sage, except for the one night that they found out that they, she wanted to go by Draco because the mom found a badge that said it. So at no point did she even know the daughter never told them. So you're getting mad at them because their daughter just went missing, is now broken in prison. And they're saying Sage and saying her and she. And all y'all care about is getting the pronouns right. See, did that sound like love to y'all? That sound like something we should try to help with? No, it sounds like there's always something to get brainwashed and agenda. It's like people find a reason to hate other people. I just want everybody to have love for each other and a certain respect for each other. I'm not, and my problem is, is that you shouldn't be forced to say these kind of things and be forced to push into a delusion. I shouldn't have to do that with my child when you have no idea who they are. I know my child. You cannot keep this from me and then expect if I say the wrong pronoun according to you. And even if I said that to you and I said, you're calling my daughter the wrong pronoun. If I said that same thing back to you, I'm a bigot. I'm the one who should be hated. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. How come I don't get any respect? My daughter just got all this stuff done to her. And all you care about is if I slip up. That's what I don't understand. It's like there's no respect or love or any care for anybody. It's disingenuous. It's just nasty and disgusting. When you do that to people, her mother's here crying on the stand, not here, but before. And all they cared about was that. That's what I don't get. But if it was any other situation, any other situation, we would show empathy. But y'all can't show any for her. The school didn't show any for the mom. They immediately assumed that she was evil. They immediately assumed that she was going to hate her daughter, even though her mother had zero idea about this. Except for that she wanted to dress like a boy and her mom said it was cool. The judge had the bailiff remove him from the courtroom. I was pleading for my child to be returned and treated for her unspeakable trauma. 
Judge Kershaw told me if I used the word trauma again, he would throw me out too. For over two months, he withheld custody. He housed Sage in the mail in a male quarters months. of a children's home. Sage told they me she put her daughter, who had just been taken through the ringer, for lack of better words, um, or vulgar words, I should say, obviously more evil. Um, they then put her in a male ward. When she had just been taken advantage of by men, they put her in a male ward. No, 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 they don't care. They don't care. Instead of trying to maybe get the girl just a little bit of help by putting her in the female ward and maybe at least, at least talk this out, you immediately put her in the male ward where she just, not, not in the male ward where she just had problems, but she just had men take advantage of her. And the first thing you do is put her in a place with all men. She was the only oh, girl and repeatedly assaulted. See what I'm saying? And then, uh, she got assaulted again. It's like, why don't y'all care about that? She was given street drugs by the other kids and Khan told her she didn't care. She just wanted to win the case and all the way to Supreme Court if necessary. Khan tried to prove abuse, but we were eventually cleared by both states of all charges. Sage later told me Khan had told her to lie, that we hit her. Khan even had Sage's school counselors testify against us, though they barely knew Sage, and they didn't know us at all. Khan told my precious child I didn't want her anymore. I found out Sage never received any of the letters I sent her. Sage ran from the children's home and disappeared for months. They told me she might already be gone forever, but I couldn't give up, and I finally found a tip on her social media that led the marshals to her in Texas. She had been drugged, raped, beaten, and exploited. This time, I was able to be with her for the traumatic rape exam and to bring her home. Back in Virginia, she entered the mental health facility that Judge Kershaw had ordered, as it would affirm her as a male. Oh my gosh, man. Obviously, you already seen this video, but just hearing it over and over and over, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's clear why they lost. It's clear why they lost this whole, uh, I, believe she, I believe this is the woman who went into the suit and the uh, school had to pay her tons of money, right? Because it's all could have been avoided if you had just told her. Why do counselors feel like they know their children better? Why do the teachers feel like they know the kids better? I'm telling you, as a person who worked with kids, and I've worked in a school setting as well, for almost 20 years, I never assumed that I knew the kid better than the parents to do them. Even though, yeah, at school you see them a lot, right? But at the same time, it's not like you're with that student 24-7 at the school. It's not like every class is you as a teacher. Most kids are going from class to class to class, unless they're really young, obviously. You know, from like, what is it, up to third grade before they really start rotating classes. So yeah, okay, so when they're that young, okay, you're seeing them a lot. But you're still not going to see them more than the parents because you got to remember holidays and three months off from school, one week off from Thanksgiving, two weeks off for uh, December. There's three months that you don't even see the child. Right. And in the capacity that you're treating them, if something goes wrong, what do you do? You tell the parent to come pick them up. If the kid's destroying the whole classroom, who do you call to come get them? The parent. So who's really dealing with the child? You're not really dealing with them. Right. You're trying to discipline them in some ways. But at the same time, it's not like you're the one who has to take full responsibility if anything happens to this kid. If this kid gets sick or something, you call the parents, right? If this kid's throwing up everywhere, you call the parents, right? If this kid, is, you know, broke their arm, you call the parents, right? But if a, a kid is saying that um, they want to be a, a completely different identity and they struggle with mental issues that you're already aware of, you keep that from them? You think that's, that you think that's, that's, you think that you're doing better than the parent and saying that I care more about the kids than the parents do, even though you never had that conversation with them. That's the thing that bothers me the most, too, is the counselors and everything never even spoke to the mom about this situation. She did not know anything about the kid calling themselves Draco. They immediately assumed that this mom was going to disown them just because the kid said so. It's just like you never even spoke to the mother. And then you see what the results were. The kid was so confused, so confused, and now it's getting assaulted. And then they get thrown into another uh, place with all men, all boys, as a girl, only to get assaulted more. Just because you want to confirm her. It's just like, is it that serious? 
It's, it can't be. It can't be. The therapist began pressuring her to have her healthy breasts removed. Sage was too scared to protest. But she asked me to secretly buy her girl's clothes because she wanted to be a girl but keep them in the car. It took a kind lawyer, Josh Hetzler, to secure her discharge. After almost a year, Sage was finally home, safe, alive. Sage is receiving professional trauma care. The first trafficker has already been convicted. Sage has nightmares, panic attacks, rape-related medical issues, but there's hope. I told her she's not broken, she's just scarred. And part of that hope is that in courageously sharing her story, others will be saved. Sage said she doesn't know who she was back then. She wasn't a boy. She just wanted to have friends. But her school, the judge, the attorney, and the doctor were all blinded by their ideology. The consequences for Sage were unspeakable. Unspeakable. Please don't let ideology harm another child. Let parents do our jobs. We know our children best, and we love them a million times more. Thank you. That's all we're asking. Just let the, let the parents handle it. In certain situations, in situations going to come up where the parents do do something. Yes, but you cannot take that and make it across the board. Oh yeah, every every parent's evil. I tell you, most time parents do care about their kids. It may seem not not seem that way. But most parents do care about their kids. I've dealt with a lot of parents, met a lot of parents. Some were bad parents, but I'm telling you, the majority of them are not. Most parents are figuring it out. But, but to think that most parents, if they find out their kid is transgender, are just going to throw them on the streets or start slapping them around. Only people who would do that are abusive parents. They would be abusive anyway. They're not going to find that one reason to be abusive. They're not going to be like, oh, you're transgender? Now I'm going to slap you. Now I'm going to hate you. You're disgusting. You're filth. Most parents who would even think that way, if they were to do anything, already are abusive to begin with. Right? And that wouldn't make it right. And hopefully you would know that as a school. There could be signs, but this kid wasn't showing any signs, according to this mother. Based off what I'm hearing, this kid didn't show any signs because as soon as she went to her mom and said, I want to dress like a boy, her mom didn't deny it. She said, OK, cool. So it's not like the mom is like, oh, no, if you do that, I'm going to smack you around. So they just flat out lied to the girl. Right. Teachers stay out of these parents privacy when it comes to their kids. You do your job. Don't keep anything away from the parents because you never know where it could happen. Because once you burn that bridge between the parents and the kid, who does it affect more? The kid. Because the parents are only doing the things that they do to love their child. But if you're burning a bridge, meaning that the parents are, their relationship is breaking down because the parents don't even know what the child is going through because you're not telling them because this kid is only like this at school. But when they're at home, they're a completely different person. It's like, why didn't you tell me my child was going through something? So I can at least talk to them. You assume that I was going to be evil first. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so used to looking at this camera. You're going to assume that they're evil first. That's messed up. That makes no sense. That's all I'm saying. I want to, I want to just watch the last part of what I was saying in uh, my other video. Let's continue. Teaching is a very particular profession. We want our kids to connect with their family. We have evidence that makes them more successful. That's not true. That's not true. You want them to connect with the family. Why would you keep play keep away? Taking that stuff out of their hands is not keep making the family get together. Because it's just a matter of time before they find out. You understand it, right? It's a matter of time before the parents find out. They're going to hear through the grapevine somewhere, what, one way or another, that what's going on. And then you're going to feel... Then you're going to really start messing up the family, right? Because now they can't trust you and they dang sure can't trust you with the kids. So to say that you're trying to keep the family together by playing keep away, that doesn't make any sense. We have evidence uh, that makes them more successful. What? Family. We have evidence that makes them more successful oh, and yeah, happier. Yeah. You want okay. Want a queer kid to thrive as an adult having support from their family is like a great start so let's think how can they have support if you're not saying anything to them thank you why might that not be happening if a kid isn't telling their family they're trans it's not because they're being influenced by a teacher it's probably because they've gotten some indication that if, That's a lie. if they tell their family it's not going to be safe That's and not if true is that is that always the situation 
Is it? See, I always hate that they always go to the worst situation. We can't assume the parents are doing that. The, the reason they might not be telling the parents is because of the way you act around them, right? We see way too many vid- videos of teachers talking about this kind of stuff, saying that their kids are scared to tell their parents. We, we, here's the thing, and I've been a child. We've all been children at some point. I've been scared to tell my parents things, but my teacher told them anyway, and I still have to go through it. And I love that because playing keep away with my parents does not help anything, does right? It? Even if a kid is a... And I understand there are some cases maybe a maybe a parent would go off the wall and be abusive to their child, but you gotta understand. And I, I'm trying to try to say this as nicely as I can. The kids that I've met, and I've worked with kids for over twenty, um, not over twenty years, but twenty years. I have met kids that have been very harmed by their parents and are afraid to tell their parents stuff. I've been down that road. I'm sure you have too as a teacher. But here's something, right? Those parents would be that way. Where, regardless of what's going on and most of the time we know that kid is going through that kind of stuff it's not like go watch that video if y'all want to hear me say more but that's my guys look and that video is called teachers want to hide trans kids from parents the teacher parent divide um and that's what i'm gonna label this video as well guys it, i'm telling you not telling the kids i mean not sorry not telling the parents is a problem it's not gonna lead to anything good it's not let me know what y'all think, man. Um, I, I like showing these kind of videos because they're so important. We got to stop keeping kids away from their parents and thinking that it's important. And this didn't used to be a big problem. But now that they want to push this ideology, which I do think is dying, but I don't know. We'll see. But, you know, I just care about the kids, man. I care about the kids and I do care about people. And I make videos on the adults who struggle with their identity, too. All I'm saying is, let's just show a little bit more love and compassion and empathy for these people before we assume that people are evil. That's all I'm asking, because that doesn't get you anywhere. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Peace.